The Buddha talks a lot about the process of becoming, which is a combination of two things. One is a particular world of experience, and two is your identity in that world, your sense of who you are, what your capabilities are. And the two are very dependent on each other. You see this particularly when you go into a new place, where the language is different, the culture is different. And all of a sudden you become very sensitive to the fact that who you are is not as clear as it was back in your old world. Which of your talents from the old world are, are still useful, and which ones are going to have to be changed if you're going to live happily in this new world? And the same process happens when you come to the Dharma. It's like a different world, a different culture. The Buddha actually calls it the culture of the noble ones. And a lot of the assumptions are very different from the world, say, of secular life out there. Here we have rebirth, we have karma. The training of the mind is the big value. Money is not the big value. The way people interact is a little bit different. And so in the beginning, it's, it's very easy that you're going to feel awkward. There are things you're enthusiastic about, but other things you're very unsure about. Then you're going to be changing as a person as you come into this world, sorting through your old habits and talents, trying to figure out which ones are still useful and which ones are not. But one part of your self that you want to hold on to and you will be fashioning a sense of self as you practice, is your willingness to learn. If you're going to take pride and have a sense of confidence in yourself, that's where you want to place it. Some people come into a situation and they like to pretend that they know everything already, think that they can kind of bluff their way through. That doesn't help. They don't learn anything. And if, however, if you're afraid to do anything at all for fear of making a mistake. You don't learn that way either. It's to be expected that there are going to be mistakes. It's like learning a new language. You trip over the grammar, you trip over the vocabulary. And, and oftentimes it's the times you made a big mistake, you're going to remember that for a long time. We've had examples here with the, the monks trying to learn Thai. Or learning French. But you can't let the mistakes get you down. You've got to decide this is something that's really valuable here. I want to master these skills. And you can have some confidence that as you master the skill and are paying careful attention with that desire to learn you're going to become a different person, a person who feels at home in this new world. So what does it mean to be willing to learn? The Buddha lists three characteristics, three types of discernment that you're going to be working on. The discernment that comes from listening, the discernment that comes from thinking, and the discernment that comes from developing. And they're usually listed with the discernment that comes from developing as the really important one. But all three of them help each other along. That's not the case that you listen and then you think, and then you just work on developing the mind without thinking or listening anymore. You do have to listen still, and you do have to think, even as you're developing qualities in the practice. And it's in the combination of those three things that you learn. A lot of people have problems mixing those together. Some people are really good at just listening and doing as they're told. Other people refuse to do as they're told until they've thought it through, they come up with their own ideas. 
But it's important that you learn how both to listen and to think. Toward the end of his life, Ajahn Mahabhu was recording as saying that Ajahn Lee was Ajahn Mun's favorite student. And you look at Ajahn Lee, and he's the kind of person who would listen and think in addition to meditating. That's how he wrote all those books. And he was constantly interested in new things. And John Fung once said to me that he was thought it was a shame that a John Lee hadn't met me. Here I was someone with a Western education, and a John Lee was, would have really picked my brain. He was always interested in learning new things. When he was the abbot at the monastery in Jundaburi, there was a new magazine that had come out at the time. The monks in Bangkok were in the process of translating the Pali Canon into Thai. And they published a magazine with some articles here, articles there, but also some new sutra translations as they were coming out. And John Lee was a subscriber. Once a month the magazine would come. Once a month the magazine would come, and for the next couple of nights John Lee would simply read the magazine during the meditation. The group meditation. So it's not the case that you learn a few basic concepts and then forget about the books and just meditate. Or you don't just do as you're told. You have to think some things through, and then as you meditate you've got to think through what are the results of what you've got, and trying to make sense of where you are, what you've learned. This has been another characteristic that John Munn liked about John Lee. So on the one hand, John Mun would give John Lee some really difficult assignments, you know, sit up all night, many nights in a row. But he noticed that John Lee had the mind that liked to put things together. As he told John Lee, he didn't see anybody else who could help sort of put the different principles of the practice into order. That's what we see in John Lee's books. what they call la kui cha in Thai, or the principles of the, of the knowledge, or the principles of the skill. As to learn, you have to have that kind of quality. On the one hand, you listen, and then you try to put things together, make sense out of things. And then with the developing, you actually try to take what you've learned, put it into practice. And be very honest with yourself about the results. And then take those results and think about them again. Where are they still good? Where are they lacking? And this way you put all those three characteristics together listening, thinking, and developing. And John Lee gives the analogies of developing skills. He says you learn from the teacher, say, how to weave a basket, how to sew a pair of pants, how to make clay tiles. And then you think about it, and then you do it, and then you think about it again. You look at the example from the teacher, and you look at your, your product, okay, where is yours still lacking? What does it look like you did wrong? And you work at it again, keep observing. And then you go beyond what you simply learned from the teacher, then you start thinking of new ways of using that skill. When you're meditating, you learn the instructions on how to breathe, how to work with the breath. And then you try it, and then you look what you got. And if the results aren't good, go back and look what you're doing again. Think about it. What's still missing? Try to be observant. Look around. Ask questions if you can't figure things out. And don't be afraid to ask questions. One of the things the Buddha prided himself on was that the teaching that he gave was a question, <clears throat> was a, a teaching where you could cross question the teacher. And he encouraged that. He said, This is a community where people are encouraged to cross question. In other words, ask people about what they've said. 
and be willing to engage in a dialogue. The purpose of that, of course, is to get you to ask questions of yourself. After all, that's how the Buddha came to awakening. He looked at what he was doing and said, These the results are not what I want. So what am I doing wrong? He went back and looked at his actions. He had to think his way through. What might be wrong here? What could I change? And then he tried that out. And it's through trial and error that he finally reached trial and success. And you look at the many setbacks he had, most people would, would have given up. But it was that pride he took in his willingness to learn. That saw him through. So as you move into the world of the Dharma, you move into the culture of the noble ones. You're not expected to know everything. In fact, you're expected to want to learn how to listen. And listen doesn't mean simply listening to the words. You actually try to memorize some things that seem important. Because after all, when you meditate, you can't have a book put out in front of you. And even though people listen to Dharma talks while they meditate, there are a lot of things that are not going to be in a particular Dharma talk that may be relevant to your meditation right now. So you have to have them someplace in the back of your mind. So when something seems important, memorize it. That's how you listen. And then you think about what you've learned and how it fits in with what you've already learned to see where it, it seems to fit together and where, where it doesn't seem to fit together. That's when you ask questions. And the way of asking questions is either asking someone else or saying, well, I'm going to put it into practice and see if there's a real conflict here, or where things can fit together. In this, in this way that you grow. As you master more and more skills, you become a different person. It's the skills that allow you to function in this new world, the world of the Dharma. But simply having the skills doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be successful. And some people find it very easy to get their mind to settle down. No big deal. Other people can read books and immediately explain what they've read. It doesn't make that much of an impact. It's when you really stop to listen and think and develop and then think again. with as much honesty as you can bring, with all your powers of observation, that's when you grow. That's when the skill makes you a new person. You find that you develop a new identity that really is helpful in the world and the Dharma. There will come a day when you don't need that identity anymore. But in the meantime, use it and develop it as best you can. <laughs>